believe in yourself. So as Nehemiah, as I'm coming up as Nehemiah, started to build the wall. Nehemiah started to pray. Nehemiah realized, Nehemiah prayer, verse chapter 1, verse 4. It came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept. And I mourn, I mourn a certain days. And I fast. And I pray before the God of heaven. And I said, I beseech thee, O, o Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keep the covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Nehemiah said, let thy ears now be attentive and thy eyes open that thou mightest see, thou mightest hear. I pray before thee now, day and night for the children of Israel, thy servant, uh, hallelujah, and I confess the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father house have sinned. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have dealt corruptly against thee. I have not kept the commandments, nor the statutes, or the judgment which thou had commanded. Thy servant Moses, remember, I beseech thee the word that thou commandest. That thy servant Moses, saying, if ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. But if ye return unto me and keep in my commandments and do them, they therefore of you cast out unto the utmost part of the heaven, yet I will gather them from thence, and I will bring them unto the place that I have chosen. Hallelujah. To set my name there. Now, what we learned before Nehemiah started the rebuilding. Amen. As I'm coming down. Nehemiah made prayer of confession. Nehemiah started to confess and the behalf of the people before he laid the foundation. What we realize is that even sins is a dangerous thing. Secret sins is a dangerous sin. Concealed sins is a dangerous thing. Hallelujah. So what we learn from Nehemiah is that Nehemiah made confession at the behalf of the people first before he laid the foundation. Now this morning, Nehemiah chapter 2, Amen chapter 1. Now, my brothers and sisters, you know, we must confess at all times. At all times, we must confess our faults and sins before the Lord. Because we realize that hidden sins can be a dangerous thing against you. No, no, what Nehemiah said. Nehemiah prayed and said, according to the word and the commandment which I gave unto Moses, that if they have sinned, you would scatter them under the heaven. But if they repented, then you would shatter them back. No, the wall was torn down as a result of Israel's sins. And we see in the Bible that whenever, amen, in the Bible, the Lord allow, amen, whenever in the Bible somebody sin, the Lord will allow, amen, amen, the, the enemy to invade, hallelujah, Israel. Whenever Israel sin, the enemy will rise up against, hallelujah, amen, them. So, my brothers and sisters, this morning, as we look at the text, Nehemiah started to, amen, You know, my brothers and sisters, it's important that we confess our sins. Oh, yes. It is important that you confess your sins daily. It is important that you determine that, amen, you will not have no hidden sins, no secret sins, no private sins, but you will confess them daily before the Almighty God. So the wall was torn down as a result of Israel 
sins do almost turn down. You know, sometimes when you are living a Christian life and you're not living the way you're supposed to live it, sometimes all hell start to pop loose because the walls are torn down. The walls was important. Hallelujah. For Israel, the walls stand as a defensive walls against the enemy. But because Israel of sin, the enemy invade. Firstly, they torn up the wall of protection. They torn up the wall, the, the, the defensive wall that would protect them, my brothers and sisters. As we go on, my brothers and sisters, the wall start to rebuild. And as the wall start to be rebuilt, you know, there are some walls in our life. There's no perfect Christian. There's no perfect Christian. There's no perfect Christian for the face of the earth. And none of us should be able to cast a stone against another. Because at some point, all of us sin at some point. Somebody worship my God. There is no super Christian. There is no perfect Christian. Hallelujah. But the Bible says we must confess our sin. The Bible says we sin. We have an advocate with the Father. In know, just Jesus Christ. We must not condemn somebody else because they have fallen from grace. Because the Bible says he that is spiritual must restore back such in the spirit of meekness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But my brothers and sisters, we cannot continue to live the way we are living. The wall of the rebuild back. The wall of our prayer life of the rebuild back. The wall of we used to read the Bible after rebuild back. The walls of family time after rebuild back. We are living in a world that is so busy, 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 busy. Every day of my child, you don't have no time for yourself, not no time for your family. So it is important, baby, yes, so true, baby. It's important to be built back the walls. So somebody and Tobiah decided that who is this Nehemiah? That traveled from so far to rebuild back the wall. They decided we are going to give Nehemiah a hard time. Now, as we look at Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 11, so I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. So Nehemiah finally arrived to, Jer to Jerusalem. And I arose in the night. And some few men with me, neither did I told, neither, neither told I any man what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither there was any beast with me, save the beast that I rode upon. Oh my God. You know, something you have to you cannot make it too foolish. Neither I said, I did not tell. What the Lord has put in my heart. Nehemiah said, I have a plan to Jerusalem, but we don't talk. Nehemiah said, I have traveled from far to rebuild back the city, but we don't tell nobody. Yeah. But what we learn about Nehemiah in this, Nehemiah said, only a few of the men that was with me, never tell all of them. There's a thing that called your inner circle. You see, inner circle is very important. Jesus of an inner circle. Jesus of 12 disciples. But out of Jesus 12 disciples, only three was the closest to him. Anybody know the three that was the closest to him? Peter, John, and James. They were the only closest three. Everywhere Jesus are going to carry those trees. Three, but see those assignment. Hallelujah. So, Nehemiah decided that not everyone is going to know what this plan is. And the Bible said, me not care no more of animal ask with me at Jerusalem to never wonder uh, what official so or uh, what about to take place. So Nehemiah said, only the ask of me have and the few commend them and we just take night. Nehemiah said, I arrived 
cheap here. But if I start to ignite and wait up at Jerusalem and go spy out while everybody asleep, me in my upper spy on the land. Oh God. Divine strategy, Nehemiah used. He used divine strategy to see. Because Nehemiah did not know if those old Israelites conspire with the enemy, amen, to destroy Jerusalem. So Nehemiah never trust no man at all. Nehemiah, you know, sometimes we trust it, trust it too much with people. And sometimes the people will trust it, trust it too much. Sometimes they take on one a secret and make a mess of our life. Oh God, somebody worship the Lord. Lord. Sometimes the people that you think are your right hand. Sometimes you say, May I tell you this? This is between me and you. Hallelujah. But when you say, This is between me and you, Tom, no, Harry, no, Mary, no, James, no. Hallelujah. Somebody worship the Lord. So we might ensure that only is in a circle would know what is going on. Oh God, I love this story. I love this story. I love this story. So we might pray. We might say to night. He took night and he viewed the walls of Jerusalem. Verse 13. Hallelujah. And I viewed the walls of Jerusalem which were broken down. And the gates thereof were consumed with fire. The gate as a defensive, amen, wall. The gate as protective method. The gate were torn down. The gate were broken. The gate were burned. Hallelujah. So any enemy could walk in. Any enemy could do as they like. Hallelujah. So the man decided that he's going to fix back this. Verse 15, then I went, then when I walked in the night by the brook and viewed the wall. Nehemiah was so concerned about the wall. Nehemiah decided that, you know, this wall has to be rebuilt. And he, he took night and he viewed the walls. Verse 16, the rulers knew not whether I went or what I did. Neither had they say, neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, nor the priests, nor to the noble, nor the rulers, nor the rest that did the work. They might have said, tell nobody. They might have said, I did not tell the priests, I did not tell the priests, I did not tell the noblemen, I did not tell the rulers of the land. They might have said, you know, Nehemiah was just like an undercover cops, Brother Michael. Nehemiah just going in and uh, sit down and uh, observe things. You know, uh, uh, the story I've told of a wealthy known jokes lad in a Jamaica. And the very be known jokes lad in a Jamaica saw this pretty, pretty nice young girl. And the pretty nice young girl made herself available from the jokes lad to see her. And the jokes lad fall in love with this pretty, pretty young lady. And the jokes lad got two children from this pretty, pretty, pretty lady. And the jokes lad tell this pretty, pretty lady everything about him. And the jokes lad Carry around this pretty, pretty lady and show this pretty, pretty lady to all of the drug dealers. Hallelujah. And the pretty, pretty lady, a too nice baby for the drugs lad. But when the pretty, 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 pretty young lady get all of the information that she need about the drugs lad, the pretty, pretty young lady. Call Scotland or call Amen the, the, the FBI and the cover squad and then come and pick up the jokes lad. The jokes lad was needed for many years. Many years the jokes lad were needed, but nobody could get the jokes lad. The jokes lad mixed up in a whole heap of things and you know how certain things run in a place. Hallelujah. So amen. So nobody could get this jokes lad. But the pretty pretty lady never said nothing at all. Just a live up life. A few more one. Write down a report. Soon as the jokes are gone, 
She sing out my report where to go. Hallelujah. And give our report every day. And they just come for this junk's land. And just take away like that. That's how Nehemiah went in and spy on the city. Never tell no one anything. You know, when they throw with that junk's land and the lady. I said, oh, you know, those persons who work as undercover have children with drugs. Oh, you go. They said, no, the state take care of the children. That's the least. They don't need no money from no drugs, now. Just a job, they do not job. And whatever the job costs, whatever the job require. So if the job require that you have to have a baby in the process of work, you have to have a baby in the process because you must go so low to get so high. Hallelujah. You have to stoop in between every information that you need. And she finally get all the information. You know, sometimes you're doing some things, you have to zip it. No, I, I learned something from a lawyer. Amen. As I learned from a lawyer, amen. The lawyer said, never say something and it don't happen as it. Wait until you have the mic in your hand. You say, yes, we have the mic in our hand. Hallelujah. Never make a saying of a thing when you don't have it as yet in your profession. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, my brothers and sisters, as we look at the, 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 the thing of Nehemiah, now, when Nehemiah decided that he started to build things, start to, first thing Nehemiah decided that the people need to hear about the word of Moses. Do you know what Nehemiah did? Nehemiah was the first prophet to ever use a pulpit. He's the first prophet to ever preach around a pulpit. Nehemiah gathered all the tribes of the land. And when he gathered all the tribes of the land, he built an altar and poured up the Bible said, so he could be above the people to look at each one and to read the commandment of Moses back to them. And then my reaffirm back the commandment of the land to them. And then my let them know that these are what you must do. Then my let them know, know that the walls are rebuilt back. Protection is back in your life. You know, when the walls of God is built in your life, prosperity will locate you. Victory will locate you. Healing will locate you. Deliverance will locate you. But several persons walls have been broken down. And as a result of the broken walls, the enemies invade in your life. Let a Christian your life be better. Let a Christian they could even experience a mighty move of God. Let a Christians, a God could do more for them. But the walls is torn down. The walls is not the same. But if we can rebuild back the walls of prayer, the walls of the fellowship, the walls of holiness, the walls of righteousness, the walls of sanctity. Hallelujah. Amen. We can have the victory. We can have a victory. We can have a victory. So as I'm closing this morning, Nehemiah start to build up the walls. Somebody that to buy a version start to oppose. They, they, they give Nehemiah a hard time. A real hard time. It weren't easy for Nehemiah to rebuild up the wall. But you know this morning I want to leave out of the text. Nehemiah found favor with the king. Nehemiah found favor with the king. The king said, Nehemiah, tell me. Tell me, Nehemiah. Tell me. This is not you, Brother Michael. We know your Brother Michael to be excited and happy. We know you, my brother, to be excited. We know Brother Ainsley, Brother Green, to be of a good countenance. We can even know, even Nehemiah, to be somebody that is happy. You see? The task of Nehemiah was that he's one of the king of Nehemiah. 
Because Nehemiah's task was to take the debt of the king. His task was to take the debt. Let me have the word of the minister prayer. Nehemiah's task was to take the debt of the king. Now, the king is supposed to get wine and the king is supposed to get food. But before the king can eat the food and drink the wine, what happened? Nehemiah have to drink the wine first. Nehemiah have to eat some of the food first. So the king have to wait for a while and ensure that he don't see Nehemiah drop down. The king have to wait for a while that he don't see Nehemiah eye a roll over because price not the food. Oh my God. When I was watching online the the security for the White House, the FBI that protect the White House. And when I see some of the training that they have to go through, they don't show all of the training for security purpose. But several of the training, and when they turn over the car, and maybe they have a car, maybe put a machine on and turn over, all to deal with a crash car, or to come out of a crash car, and they put the car on the water also, to if the car turn over for the sea and under the water, how to come out of a car while under the water. Amen. And when I see all the job of the security was to take a bullet for the president. The job of those who work with Donald Trump are uh, Obama, President of the United States. They have to take the bullet. They are trained to take bullets for the president. The president must not die while they are protecting the president. Lest every one of them will be fired if a gunshot reach a president while they are protecting the president. Every one of them will be fired. So somebody must take the bullet for the president. It was so with the Maya that the Maya have to drink the wine of the king first before. Sasha, can you drink the pies first? Sister Grief, you will drink the pies first. You will drink it first, Sister Nama. Sister Carrick, you want that type of job, Sister Miller? Sister Barker, you want that type of job? To drink the pies of first. I would never apply for such a job. I look my life so dearly for me to apply for a job that me, I will protect somebody else to live and I must die instead of the person. But that was the job of me, Maya. He was the wine bearer. He was the one that had to taste the wine before the king had the wine. So the king really loved Nehemiah because Nehemiah decided to risk his life for the king. Now, can I tell you something? That king is God in this story. And Nehemiah is a figure of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came and risked his life for you and I. Jesus Christ, he came and he risked his life for you and I. He risked his life. He gave up his life. He gave up his life. Can I tell you something? That story in Nehemiah, in Nehemiah's story, Jesus in Nehemiah is the rebuilder of broken life. The story of Nehemiah is the rebuilding of broken life as I close. Jesus came to rebuild that broken life. Let our life have been broken. Hallelujah. Some have been abused. Some have been shipwrecked. Some have been cast aside.
back. If we get back Jesus in the community, it can really be back. If we get back Jesus in Jamaica, it can really be back. If we get back Jesus in our nation, it can be rebuilt back. He is the rebuilder of broken life. I want to tell somebody, don't use the rule of kill yourself. Ah, oh, come on, look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, there is no need for you to hang yourself. There is no need for you to condemn yourself. Somebody will make a mistake. Somebody will mess up so badly. Somebody will have sorry for what you have done. Oh, you are condemning yourself. You are saying you give up. You are saying I'm going to serve the Lord anymore. Can I tell you something? Jesus is the rebuilder, a broken life. I don't care how your life broken. I don't care if you're broken with drugs and marijuana. I don't care if you're broken with happiness. I don't care what you have been broken with. Hallelujah. Jesus, in closing, you want to build back the broken pieces of your life this morning. Come on, say, neighbor, Jesus wants to build back. The broken pieces of your life. Oh God, I wish, I wish I could sing this morning. I wish I could sing for you right now. I would sing this song for you. Have you been to the Packers house? Oh, somebody will say, I would sing this song. Have you been to the Packers house? The Packers, we want to know you again. The Packers. Oh, Lava Casapaya. Look at your neighbor, Sir Cleaver. The pattern not true with you yet. The pattern won't be real. Oh, I don't care what society is saying about you. I don't care what people are saying about you. I don't care if they're finding out your fight and fear. I don't care if they are saying that you are failed. Oh, somebody rise up. Somebody don't stay where you are at. Rise up again. Rise up again! Rise up again! There's still a second chance! There's still a third chance! But there's still a fourth chance with God! Hallelujah! Glory to there's still a third and fourth chance with God. The pata. Somebody's in the pata. Somebody's in the pata. The pata want to mourn us again. The pata, come on, say neighbor, we're closing now. Say neighbor, the numbers are perfect. But said, neighbor, when I look at the pattern, when it was mar in his hand, he never showed the clear way. The Bible said, the Lord said to Nehemiah, the Lord said to Jeremiah, I go down at the pattern house. And as he go down at the pattern house, the pattern was uh, making the amen. Hallelujah, a child. The pattern was making a child. Oh, but the clear was amen in his hand. In his hand. Oh, but the pattern, the pattern break up the clear, break up the even the joy, and the pattern will build it again. Oh, can I announce to somebody? God is putting the back on the wheel. Oh, somebody is not true with you yet. Yes, I know you make some mistake. Yes, I know you say some things that you don't miss. Yes, I know you do some things that you don't miss. Yes, I know, I know, I know, I know. But the pata, the pata, the pata, want to rebuild you back again. I, I know you don't feel like you want to go back and go church. I, I know you don't feel like you want to go to with God. I, I know you don't feel like you want to get married again. I, I know you don't feel like you want to have any children again. I, I know you have been rejected. I, I know you have been abused. I, I know you have been scandalized. I, but can I talk to some hurt people closing? Can I talk to some people that is hurt? Oh, I want to tell you oh, that the pattern is going to fix you again. The pattern is going to fix things in your life. The pattern is going to mold things in you. The pattern is going to sort it out. The pattern is going to sort out some things. 
So I don't worship the Lord. So as I close, as I close, I'm closing now. Jesus is the rebuilder of broken life. The story of Nehemiah is a lovely one. The story of Nehemiah, let us know that Jesus is a lover. Oh, the love and the restorer of broken life. Some of your life have been broken. Some of you are going through some rough time. But can I tell you something? The Papa still loves you. Oh, God. You, you, the Papa have nothing against you. Oh, there, there's nothing take God by surprise. God knows everything that was about to happen. He, he, he predestined things. Oh, he ordained things. Somebody worship the Lord. Something in your life that needs to rebuild back this morning. Something in your life. Could it be the altar which you used to talk to God and broken down? Could it be you used to pray one 20 minutes prayer or half hour prayer but it is not the same anymore? Could it be that the secular world take you up? That you have no more time to spend with the pattern? Could it be, hallelujah, that situation that you're so depressed that you don't want to have nothing to do with the pattern? Could it be, my brothers and sisters, that you have said some stuff that you should have never said? And as a result, you feel guilty now that you've come back to yourself. I want to tell you, Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Now, therefore, there is no condemnation to them that is in Christ Jesus. Oh, God. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 There is no condemnation. So as we close, there is no condemnation. To those of in Jesus Christ. I want you to know that God loves you so much. He loves you so much. He loves you so much. Let us stand. Let us stand. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son. Those who believe in him. Should not perish. But have everlasting life. The pattern. Want to mourn you back again. Nehemiah decided that the walls must be rebuilt. Nehemiah decided that whatever it takes is to end, he's going to rebuild.